Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Uh, excuse my voice, I am dealing with a bit of a uh, cold at the moment, but I'm going absolutely crazy, uh, lying in bed, um, drinking cups of tea. Um, I've just had my morning coffee, so I'll hopefully get my voice will get a little better uh, as this video progresses. Um, I wanted to make a video about high available, really, really good, very, very reliable home internet. I think I'm gonna call this something like how to get really reliable home internet now. I have made a whole bunch of videos on this topic, a playlist, and they have been my most popular videos on YouTube to date. They generate uh, a decent amount of comments and emails and people are interested in this. Um, my interest in this whole subject started because even though I live in Israel, which is current, which is commonly thought of as, you know, a high tech superpower, and it is, but internet connectivity is not always equitably distributed. so. There are kind of like black spots and it really just depends whether the companies uh, have brought out good infrastructure in your exact part of the city or country. And in my case, whatever neighborhood and street I'm living on in Jerusalem, the best we have, there is no fiber yet. Even though there's three different companies laying fiber optic internet connectivity, none of them have hooked up uh, my building yet or street. I'm on all the waiting lists. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. So what I did instead was last summer our internet got really, really bad. Uh, it's VDSL based connectivity and I got a bit creative and that led to this series of videos. So I'm gonna cover two topics in this video and I'm gonna be diagramming stuff here um, using uh, draw.io. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead now and turn on my cursor so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna cover two different ways you can get amazing home internet. Um, and the first one I'm gonna call this is high availability home internet. Now the thing about this, the reason I'm using this terminology specifically is because there's a difference between a lot of comments I've got from people on YouTube are, well, oh, c cool, so we can like add two different uh, internet connectivities and like put the speed together, right? And I'm like, uh, depends, not really. That's a different thing. There's something called connection bonding. I'm gonna show a few ways you can achieve connection bonding. Now the difference between this and my previous videos is this is just conceptual. I'm not going to talk about specific hardware products that you can use. I'm just gonna show you how you can do it. So basically the key, if you have sucky home internet and it's amazing how many people suffer this problem. Let's say you have, you have your internet service provider, your ISP, but for want of a better word, they're kind of crap. And you've got a second ISP available. You're like, ah, they weren't so good. So I'm just gonna go over to ISP two. And this is exactly what happened to me. So you you know, you get the whole new internet in and you're like, oh wait, they're kind of crap too. It's surprising how many people encounter this issue. I've seen YouTube videos about this in India, the US, me here in Israel. So this is not actually a far-fetched uh, scenario. So let's say you work from home and your business depends upon your, the quality of your internet. So you're going to want that internet to be super reliable. Now the secret to doing this is to get multiple internet connectivities. And it doesn't really matter what connectivities you use. The idea is that you are multiple. And basically it just comes down to simple mathematics, right? If, if you have internet one that's online 80% of the time, but offline 20% of the time, and ISP two is online 80%, 20% off, then if you combine those two, you're gonna reduce and minimize the likelihood. Now you can, you can take this exponentially further. You could sign up for three internet connections, and I'm sure that places like emergency, uh, you know, uh, emergency dispatch centers probably actually do sign up for like three, four ISPs. Even in mobile broadcasting, uh, when you see uh, TV crews out shooting, they use something called connection bonding that commonly bonds up four or five connections. So it's, uh, this, this kind of stuff isn't actually so theoretical. It's something people really do. Let's, take, let's keep it simple for the purpose of our example. And let's just say we're going to be using two um, ISPs. Now, I'm just gonna say ISP1, okay? So let's say it's gonna be VDSL or coax uh, connectivity, so if you're in the US, or fiber for that matter. So people will say, well, once I've got fiber, I'm set, right? And that's not necessarily the case. I'm waiting on fiber, as I mentioned. I thoroughly intend still using the setup even post fiber because speed and reliability are not the same, right? You can have a really fast internet connection, but if it goes down a bit, it's not so good. So your first stage here is to sign up for two internet connections. Now let me let me just roll back a little bit. 
what we're doing here is splitting out a network into its components, right? So what, when people think of a, um, a, a, a router, what people commonly call a router, right? You say, or the box, the thing sitting in your cabinet that connects to the internet. It's actually a few components in one. It's a modem, it's a router, and it's a wireless access point, okay? So what you may think of is just a, it's more complicated than it looks, right? And what we're doing in this network design is basically splitting that out into different components. So let's get back to this. So the first thing we're doing is we're gonna be using our ISP and ISP2. Now what I did personally is I set up cellular internet, I bought a 4G data SIM, I bought a, mo I bought a 4G router, but again, it doesn't matter. Now, this isn't about the details here, this is about the concept. So I'm gonna say it can be anything. It could be an ISP, so you could use two fiber connections, or it could be cellular, or it could be satellite for that matter. Now, if you ask me which would I choose, what would, what would my dream internet setup be? It might be something like ISP1 fiber, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second. ISP2 would be, uh, let's say, BDSL. And then ISP, ISP3 would be satellite. Now the reason I do it like this is because if you're thinking about what's going to screw up your internet, right? It's, it's frequently stuff like a digger outside your front door dug through the cabling, right? So if that goes down, I'd want to diversify the infrastructure as far as possible. So you could actually do VDS, or you could do fiber plus cellular plus satellite. Now, if you start looking into the detail of all this stuff, it's pretty fascinating. How does cellular internet work? Like when you connect on your cell phone? So it comes from towers, as people know. But then the towers do actually have to think about it. They loop back into the network at some point. Um, and the word is evading me for that. Backhaul, backhaul. So they backhaul to the, to the fiber network at some point, but further up the line, further upstream. So that would be that and satellite is, you know, coming from outer space, literally. So that's probably the most resilient. So that would be my dream team. But let's just keep it simple. Again, as I said, we're gonna be going for fiber and cellular. Now what you wanna do here in terms of the hardware, so you sign up for your two plans, and then you're gonna need two modems, right? Remember, we're separating out the components. So for fiber internet, you're going to want a fiber modem. For cellular internet, you're going to want a let's say 4G or a 5G modem, modem, not router, okay? Because we're gonna be adding the router later. So you get signed up for your two ISPs, you sign up for two different modems, and now we're gonna actually add the router to the network. And the router is gonna be a wired router, okay? Wired router, now again, I'm not gonna go into, pro I'm just gonna tell you how to find these things. They are available from business, Internet, I'm just trying to make these, this box a bit bigger. Maybe I need a rectangle, I need a rectangle, okay. The router can be, um, it's not your, I've, your it's not the, the router that you typically buy as a consumer because that's intended, that's, as I said, actually three pieces in one. So you're gonna find these called wired routers, ethernet routers, SMB routers, VPN routers, okay. And basically, um, there we go. I'm gonna just make this a little bit bigger. And these are routers that just have ethernet ports. But the key thing, oh, I should have added one more. The key thing, multi-one routers, the key thing is that they have multiple, the capability, two capabilities, that they're gonna have multiple WAN ports um, and that they're going to um, be able to do something called load balancing, okay? So th these are the names you're gonna encounter. This I would search in, like enterprise computer stores for one of these. Uh, you don't have to look that far. If you're in the US, you can totally find loads of these on Newegg or et cetera. Um, and the capabilities are, I'm just gonna clear that away. You want something that has multiple WAN ports and that can do something called, um, well, it's actually failover technically. It's actually failover, right? And I'll explain why in a second. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory already, but um, so I'm just gonna say, I use personally the TP-Link ER605. It's a very, very basic load balancing router. It's only about 100 bucks, pretty cheap as well. I actually don't recommend it so much because it's been a little bit buggy at times. 
Other companies you might consider buying from are TP-Link, Ubiquity, Mickey Truck, Cisco, etc. They all do products that would fall into this category, okay? So load balancing router here in the middle, I'm just gonna say. So you've got your two modems, and then you're gonna connect these both into the load balancing router, okay? And this is gonna be, this is going to be going into WAN one. WAN one. So that's connected to the first WAN port. And this is gonna be into the second WAN port. Now I actually advise you will find um, products by uh, companies such as Draytech that actually try to do all this in one piece of hardware. They've got multiple WAN intakes to the router, they've got a Wi-Fi access point, blah, blah, blah. I've actually come to believe this is better. The reason I say that is because if you buy one thing, let's say, in, as, as in my situation, you, you're waiting for fiber, right? So you're gonna buy yourself a low balancing router based on your current need or an all-in-one router based on your current needs. And then when fiber comes along, you're gonna have one ports that don't have the throughput for fiber or don't have the modem for fiber. So I would advise splitting out components. It allows you to update your home network in a more modular fashion. So, and now here's just the way I've configured my home network. So that's kind of the hardware. Another load balancing router, you configure internet failover. Load balancing router, set up for failover. And failover means you just tell the router, okay, I want my primary connectivity to be the fiber link. And then if that goes down, please switch me over to cellular. And when it come, fiber comes back up, please put me back over to fiber, okay? So this is all on the software level. And therefore, how you do it will depend on your, uh, your load balancer. Now, if you are my network, I personally use an ethernet switch because Typically on one of these things, you're gonna have like, let's say a four port router and two of those are taken up by your WANs. So to give yourself more local area networks capability, I would recommend branching off to a switch and then that's it. And then I have everything wired. So I have like my NAS on the switch, coming off the switch. Probably won't surprise most people to know that I'm a desktop rather than a laptop fan. So I have actually this computer I'm using now. My desktop is coming off the switch but this is inheriting my desktop, my NES is all inheriting, whoops, I've got one extra box here, is all inheriting the balanced internet that has two WANs coming into it. Um, and then finally, you may as well, right? If you're going to the trouble of setting up this crazy internet setup, a really good AP, right? You don't need to rely upon the, because we're going modular, to get your Wi-Fi you can get a really good enterprise grade AP to blast crazy good Wi-Fi internet. So, you know, something like, something like a Ubiquity would be good. But the beauty again in this network design is everything, all the kind of final stage hardware, I'm gonna color these yellow, the final stage hardware, the ethernet switch, the stuff that's actually supplying the connectivity, all inherits the two connections. And that's basically it. And then of course, just to make this complete because I'm a stickler for, uh, for this kind of thing, Wi-Fi connected devices at the tail end. So they're gonna be connected through the Wi-Fi, which is gonna be coming from the AP, which is going to be balanced in the load balancer, uh, et cetera. I unfortunately have shaded this and I can't unshade it. How can I unshade it? There we go. Deshaded, deshaded, sweet, okay. So that's it guys. This is a high availability home internet architecture. You've got your fiber, you've got your fiber cellular or the two coming into a load balancing router, branching off to an ethernet switch and a really good AP. And then you've got your uh, device, your end devices connected all the way through. Now, this is not gonna combine your bandwidth, okay? So how could you combine your bandwidth? So what you need to do is something called connection bonding for that. So instead of the load balancing router, you could use something like Speedify on um, Speedify on an Ubuntu server, right? The thing about connection bonding, actually bonding up connections, is that you need stuff on the one side, so it's actually a bit more complicated. One uh, VPS, let's say, right? And the one VPS is going to be bonding your connections, your ones. This diagram's getting a little bit crazy. 
a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy, getting crazier. Right, you're gonna be bonding up your two connections and returning them back and then bringing it through the network. So that's what you need. You need 